I remember to this day that light tan desert clay and how it sticks to your heels after a summer rain. Oh, we're, we're on? We're filming? Oh, okay. Well, hello everybody! And welcome back to G-Bear's Off-Grid Ways, a homestead in the desert. Yeah, 104 degrees right now. Winds are at 26 miles per hour coming out of that direction. And uh, it feels like I'm standing in front of a giant hair dryer. Boy, it is hot and then dry. And that's a perfect lead into what we're going to be discussing today. So I announced a while back, a few days back, that I was going to be doing a series on um, solar cooking, different types of solar cooking. So we're going to get started with uh, showing you part of the first one today. Um, there'll be a second part of this one tomorrow because uh, it's two different things and I didn't want to get them mixed together, especially with the uh, the weather the way it is. So anyway, this is part of what I'm talking about. And you go, well, that's a barbecue. Well, that used to be a barbecue. This now is a solar dehydrator. It's a small one. I've used it for quite a few years. And uh, I just did some work on it today and uh, uh, cleaned it up and modified it a little bit. We're going to get into that and I'm going to tell you exactly what I'm talking about. But this has been out here now for a couple of hours here in the sun. And I brought my little no-touch thermometer here. And we're going to squeeze it here and get a light on this thing. Right now, that's 118, deg well, 100, yeah, 118 and a half degrees Fahrenheit. That's pretty hot, but that's uh, perfect for dehydrating. Now, it does need a good fresh coat of paint on the outside, but let me show you the modifications I did to this. Now, this was originally a uh, propane um, barbecue. You can buy these pretty cheap, usually around the springtime, just before summer comes, you'll find them everywhere. Um, I took the propane section out of it because that's not needed. So anyway, here's what I did. You can find these things in uh, thrift stores and yard sales and all that really, really cheap. And these things are great for what I'm going to uh, be doing with it. So what I did was I got the... Uh, let me see if I can get this out of here. There we go. I got the um, the grills because they had rusted a little bit. Um, covered with this uh, quarter inch aluminum mesh. Now, I, I use this because this is what I had. But you can also use some uh, quarter inch... Uh, hardware cloth that you can buy at Home Depots and Lowe's and that um, Ace Hardware wherever you want to get it So you can use that also and that's a lot easier to work with than the stuff that I used here This took a little finagling to get it into place. So the bottom rack I did also and uh, I got that one pressed down in there wedged pretty tight um this is where I'm going to put my um, stuff that I'm going to dehydrate. And I'll get to that in a minute. But let me flip this over and show you the other modifications. So un underneath here, it had holes to let air in for burning charcoal. Well, I still wanted to let air in, but I didn't want flies and ants and stuff like that getting in. So I just took a regular piece of uh, nylon window screen um, always save a few remnants of that when you repair a window screen or something. Um, now there's a hole on the end here where the uh, propane unit went in. 
And then there was four holes on the bottom here to let um, air in. Then there's one hole, screw hole in the center here that uh, held the, uh, the propane flame piece that was under there um, that cooked your food. And we don't need any of that, but we did want to make sure that we could seal it off so that bugs don't get into it while we're using it. Same thing here, you see we got these uh, louvers on the sides, one there and one there. And right here used to have a little thermometer in it. And that was uh, um, fine, but I don't need it for a, a dehydrator. So I took my hot glue gun again and I glued a couple of pieces of nylon screen in there to cover the holes and that hole also so the bugs can't get in because nothing will ruin your um, your dehydration worse than uh, opening it up and finding a bunch of bugs sitting all over it right all right so let me put this back together and I'll tell you what I'm going to be doing with this is tomorrow We're going to make simple um, Colonel Jackson's beef jerky. Yeah, good old beef jerky. And it's a real simple recipe. And I'm going to be doing it on camera for you. Um, right in place here, we'll be, we'll be getting it all put together and put it in here and close it up and let it sit out here in the sun for a while and uh, then we'll come back and check on it a little later and I'll show you how things came out. Uh, there'll be a two-part series tomorrow showing you how to make simple beef jerky and uh, you're also going to get to learn a few things tomorrow. Um, some of you may know the stuff I'm going to teach but other, others might say I didn't know that. So anyway, that's the plan for tomorrow. So I'll probably get out here and do this uh, fairly early before it gets too hot and before the winds come because uh, that makes it a pain in the neck. Although the winds do keep the flies down. So I'll be putting my, uh, my cutting board right here and... Um, I got my piece of meat in the refrigerator right now. I took it out of the freezer and it's thawing. And I'll show you which cut I like to use and all of that and exactly how I prepare it. Uh, tune in tomorrow, everybody. And thanks for joining me today. This is G Bear reminding you, don't forget your thumbs up. Don't forget to share and subscribe. And this is G Bear signing off.